of us now with Nigel Farage, the former UKIP leader uh, and also, uh, of course, a, a former MEP, a UKIP MEP. Um, Mr Farage, when you see uh, what's happening on the streets of Spain today, you see these hundreds of thousands of people who've come down and to say, we want to stay a part of Spain. A lot of them have EU flags uh, carried as well. They want to stay a part of Spain and a part of the EU. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, look, I mean, there are two very clear sides to this and, and both now locked into very intransigent positions. I suspect that if the Spanish government had not ordered the police to behave the way they did on October the 1st, when that referendum was being held in Catalonia and over 900 people were injured by the Spanish police, I suspect if it hadn't been for that, we would not be at anything like the crisis level that we are now. I clearly understand there's a voice that says stay part Mr. of Spain. Farage, that, that referendum was illegal. That, that, you know, the, the referendum, it, it, wasn't, it didn't follow the Spanish law. It, it wasn't a legal event. So why should the Spanish government have allowed it to take place? Well, I don't think, legal or not, that you can stop in a free country people from being able to express their own opinion. Uh, you know, I mean, part of the United Nations Charter is that people should be allowed the right to express their own national self-determination. And the Spanish government made a huge mistake in behaving as they did, as did the European Union, by justifying that use of force. And that, I think, is what's given the separatist movement the real momentum. Has the European Union really justified the force, or, or, or has it said that it, it just simply wants Spain to remain united? Well, no, it started off with that position, uh, describing it as a domestic matter, and this from a European Commission who interfere in the affairs of Poland and Hungary and virtually everybody else. And then when pushed, you know, Franz Timmermans, who is the deputy to Jean-Claude Juncker, said that he thought necessary force had been used. Um, and I think, you know, that has made a lot of people in the international community feel slightly more sympathetic towards the separatist cause. Look, ultimately, elections are not going to solve this. The only way through the middle of this is to hold a referendum and for both sides to say beforehand they will accept the result. But it's, it's not just the EU that has been critical, is it, of the referendum? The UK, uh, the US, lots of other countries have also stood alongside Spain and said, you know, this, isn't, uh, this wasn't a, a legal event, so why should they let it happen? Well, you, know, you, you could argue legality, um, but ultimately the only way to deal with separatist independence movements is to give people the chance in a full free and fair referendum to have their say. We did this for Scotland in our country just a few years ago. And, and given this standoff, you know, where Carlos Puigdemont insists that he is still the president of Catalonia and let the Spanish PM Rajoy insist that he's not, given this ridiculous situation that we've got, I don't think just holding elections solves this problem. But would you then like to see all the other countries in Europe who've got separatist movements, places like Bavaria, Germany, Lombardy in Italy, Corsica in France, all have independent referendums in those regions as well and see Europe really, really fragmented? Well, in most cases, in most cases, you know, the third way argument of more autonomy would be the solution. I'm, I'm not actually convinced that an argument for more autonomy in Catalonia right now would actually work. And of course, in most cases, regions that want more autonomy or even separation have always been pro the European Union. When the Scottish referendum was on, many of my Parliament colleagues in Brussels would be very happy for Scotland to have gone on their own because they knew that Alex Salmond wanted to be part of the European project. What is different with Catalonia is that not only are the separatists against Madrid, they're pretty fiercely against Brussels too. But what about the impact that this is having on the Spanish economy? Uh, bad uh, and potentially disastrous. I mean, Catalonia is about 20% of Spanish GDP. Um, uh, clearly, arguments about uncertainty uh, are now very high indeed. And if we reach a situation where the nationalist separatist parties in Catalonia don't recognise the legitimacy of that 21st of December election, then I think the implications for Spain are pretty bad. You're suggesting that a referendum should be held. Should that be a referendum that is just in Catalonia or should it be a referendum across the whole of Spain? Well, again, we had the same argument here about Scotland, didn't we? Should Scotland vote on their own future in the UK or should the rest of the UK vote on Scotland? Uh, we decided it was Scotland that should vote. And I think in this case, you know, 
People have a right to determine their own identities, their own nationalities. It's a principle that's been deeply embedded for a hundred years in Western culture. It is a fundamental part of the United Nations Charter and to respect that you have to hold a full free and fair referendum. And it may well be that those people today in the streets of Barcelona win the argument. If they do, fine, you put to bed the issue of separation for a generation. While we have you, uh, Mr Farage, I just want to ask your, your opinion about a couple of things that have been happening in Westminster over the last few days. The issues of, of sexism have really come to the fore, haven't they? Uh, Cabinet Office investigation uh, against Mark Gardner uh, being launched and his behaviour. Is something very wrong with the Houses of Parliament at the moment? Uh, I think there is a cultural problem. I suspect, I mean, the truth of it is, um, I know far more about the European Parliament, where I think things are even worse uh, than they are in Westminster, uh, in terms of the hierarchy, in terms of perhaps um, sexual predation. I think things are far worse in the European Parliament than I suspect they are in Westminster. So does something need to be done to turn around this culture? Yes. My only concern is that we'll finish up through this as we did with Operation Utree, with some innocent people being named as well. So we do need to be careful, uh, and what gets reported must be based on some degree of fact. What did you think about Michael Gove's comments about the Today programme yesterday and Neil Kinnock's response? Oh, look, you know, Michael Gove was trying to be funny. It was a live audience. Neil Kinnock laughed. Interestingly, the audience laughed too. Um, he was then torn to bits, particularly through Twitter. Uh, look, you know, uh, Michael Gove uh, is, is a very competent uh, minister and politician. I'm just not sure that stand-up comedy is quite his scene. Do you, do you think sexual abuse of women is, is a subject that, that's funny, that there's a, a gold mine of humour to be found there? Oh, I think people make humour out of all sorts of things. Uh, you could rule every form of humour tasteless in some way if you chose to do so. Uh, did he misjudge it? Yes. Uh, do we need to go on about it for days and weeks? No. OK, Mr Farage, thanks very much for joining us today.